Okay, welcome to the stream. Uh, this is attempt number two. I had my crone issues on the first go, so hopefully you can actually hear me this time. So, um, this is an unboxing video for Spire's End, which as you can see on the screen there, it was a Kickstarter around about this time last year. Um, I was initially drawn to it thanks to this beautiful art design and the, the red and the black colour scheme. Uh, it looks an absolute work of art uh, and I'm hoping it plays that way as well. Um, as you can see, uh, it was past, well obviously it, it, uh, it got funded because I've got a copy here in front of me. Uh, two and a half thousand backers and I mean just look at the picture there, it's just absolutely beautiful one to two players ages 16 and up 30 minutes play per chapter so without further ado let's open it up and have a nosy inside okay I'm afraid the shrink has already been popped but here I have um, Spire's End in all its glory. A card game adventure of high stakes and horror, the box says. With logos all around. And then an example of that beautiful artwork on the base there. A game by Gregory Favreau, illustrations by Benjamin Wieserman, Weissman, whichever continent of uh, pronunciation you adhere to. So as I said, one to two players, age 16 and up, and there are six chapters, each of which should take about 30 minutes to play. Uh, and on the ends of the boxes there, you have this beautiful art as well, which um, Greg says is designed to, um, to replicate a sort of like a hood, slowly illuminating. So let's have a look. Although I have already had a look on the failed stream. These are sleeves for the story cards. So the first thing we have are our dice that match those symbols on the uh, on the card backs and on the hood. What are they for? No idea. We have our little tracker cubes in the thematic red and black with a few some clears and a few yellow ones flown in there, thrown in there for good measure, which I believe are for optional extra things you might want to track. There's my um, sleeves for the action cards as well. We have our eight sided dice, again in red and black. Then, again I've already popped the shrink on these. So here we have our uh, action cards. I'm assuming these get shuffled and it's the equivalent of rolling dice. I don't know. I guess we'll find out because they're numbered from one, two, three, four. It looks like they're gradually getting worse and worse. Five until you get the red card for a six. Who knows what that means? I guess I shall find out soon. And we have the same action card icon on the back. But then the meat of the game itself, what you may notice, uh, conspicuously absent here, are is an instruction book. That's because the cards themselves are the instructions. Now look at that meaty hunk of chunk, this solid brick of cards there. With our with the beautiful artwork on the back showing a, a hood slowly illuminating as you progress through the story. Ooh. Greg has been very keen on social media to point out that this sort of artifacting is deliberate, it's not a printing error. Um, perhaps uh, I'll understand more as I play. But I'm not going to spoil any of the story cards, but 
towards the back here, I think it's after this red card, yep, we have our instructions. So you've got, effectively you play this game like a book. You start the book game and you turn it over to see where you are, what's going on, what you're facing. Uh, if you've played Escape the Dark Castle, it's very similar to that, but without the randomised element, you are literally playing through that block. Uh, as it tells you to go to a particular card, just like a Choose Your Own Adventure book, you would go to that particular card. Uh, but we have here our set of cards which give us our instructions for navigation. And working your way through these cards, as you can see, it has an instruction at the end, reveal card number two. And that is how the game plays. You follow the cards, you deal with the encounters that you're facing, you then move on to where it tells you to move on. And then we have uh, an explanation of the card anatomy. Excuse me. So at the bottom here, we have, uh, I think it's six, or is it seven allies that we can choose from for playing. So looking at these cards, we have, that's your hit points at the top. So for Rolf the Kill Cow, hit points are five. Armour points threshold is two. Uh, you lay black and red cubes at the side to show the current level. You've got meters over here at the top right hand side for rest and boost. We have the recoup bar, which I believe is a stage at the end of the phase where you can recoup your hit points based on what you roll on a dice. Uh, and then you've got your actual action attacks. And I believe uh, you have to spend your hit points to get the, the higher attack. So it's a constant balancing act of risk and reward. There are a set of death effects and there are some status effects there, which I don't know what they mean. I'll be honest. Uh, having a quick flick through the rest of the allies that we can choose from playing. So after Wolf the Kill Cow, who is there with a sharp spade and a rather fierce looking plant. Uh, their actions are shovel, prune, slice, snappers and feed and death move is encore. We have Dane the Rutterkin with a sort of a a DIY Wolverine project going on there with wood, wooden beams strapped to his arms with lots of like 12 inch nails sticking out of them it looks like. His actions are punch, Bash and Boast, Bloodlet, Split Fist, Rust Slice, and his death move is Look. He has six hit points and three armour. Hildegard the Endrake with a ferret on her shoulder and a, looks like several explosives. Yep, and to confirm that, her actions are Slingshot, Fanged Ferret, Bombs Away, Swift Straps, and Bag of Tricks, and her death move is Elect. Choose the next ally and then shuffle the ally deck. Six hit points, three armour. Maybe I should hold these a bit closer so that I can do the art a bit more justice. We have Sedani, Sedani, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. Five and five on her stats. Uh, looks like a cannon strapped to her arm and a great big shield with spikes on it. So yeah, action, shield thrust, a bulwark bash, mini cannon, force deflection and frag cannon. And her death move is rebuild. Leo Frick the Forester. He has a little creature on his shoulder with antlers and had a massive axe and several barrels of alcohol on his chest, it looks like. So his actions are antlered, splinter, jack attack, mash, timber hack, and his death move is jackalope justice. His stats are five and two, as you can see. And then we have Rangitaki the Outsider. Actions are Babalu, Bamboo Punch, Fog Cutter, Tutu Tupo, Ku Anuanu, and her death move is Chant, and her stats are five and three. And then I think Millicent the Silk Weaver is the last one, stats of five and two. Her actions are Needle Dart, Backstitch, Silk Strike, Baste, Silk Barrage, and her death move is Surge. 
and that brings us all the way back to Rulf the Kill Cow where we started. So just quickly paging through the rest of the instructions we have a guide there on combat. I'm not going to sort of decipher this and try and translate it on a live stream because I will just get it all wrong. Uh, but essentially it's explaining how each of these actions work, what the cost, the hit point cost is. So for example, on the rule for the kill cow, it costs no hit points to shovel. And if you roll a five to an eight, I believe that means you deal one damage. All the way up to feed, which costs four. If you roll a two to a five, that gives a star. Who knows what that means? See, told you live trying to decipher rules isn't going to work. Uh, six to, if you roll a six to a seven, you do six damage. And if you roll an eight, you deal five damage or B. And B is cripple. And there is a sort of a re-roll symbol, whatever that means. I think that might be to do with the recoup. Maybe not. Who knows? So recoup is the stage where you roll a dice and you can sort of earn some of your hit points back, I believe. Then there is an upkeep phase. I think that's where that uh, recycling icon comes in. Uh, yeah, so the black recycling is one hit plus one hit point on a target, whereas the red one is minus one hit point on an enemy. So that B there for um, Rulf the Kill Cow will do to lose two hit points to an enemy. Enemy combat. So this is when the enemies attack us and they also have their own recoup and status phases. Summary of the icons and what they all mean. How to handle loot. The loot cards will have um, the main card and the artwork, but then a little black sort of section at the bottom so they will just peek out from under your card so you can instantly see what you've got even though it's stacked under your card. And then death and quick start. So what happens when they die? They trigger their death move which uh, I have already covered on each of the cards. And um, how to quickly start the game again. Uh, and there's also instructions there, very brief instructions uh, on a two-player game where you control an ally each. Summary of the various state of status effects in play. Bubble, encore, encourage, encourage, encourage. Chant, cleanse, look, pierce, rebuild, regen, strength and surge are all the positive ones. And the negative X are bleed, confusion, cripple, dwindle, exhaustion, harvest, hinder, impaired vision, intimidate, seduce, snuff, stun and turncoat and then you have your multiple trackers there if you're having to track the same effect on multiple characters you can use two different symbols and that's what this final card is it's your status tracker of both the positive and the negative effects right that is all i'm going to go through because to go through any of this would be deemed spoilerish and I am not doing that. So I will carefully put these back into here. Keeping them in their correct order. Just look at the artwork, look at it. And then I'm going to um, get sleeve in and get playing. So I hope you've enjoyed that. This is my second go at looking at this, as you know. Roll it up into this lovely little box. I left the ribbon sticking out by accident, never mind. So there you go, Spy's End. I hope you've enjoyed that quick preview. Um, I certainly did, but I'm looking forward to playing it even more. So um, thanks for watching. And we shall see you again another time. Bye.